Oh, uh, hey everybody, how is it going? It is uh, Saturday night, September 20, uh, September 7th, and um, we just got done chopping here for the night, and I'm standing down in the new bunk. Now, um, in this video, I'm just going to be answering a couple of questions that arose um, from the last video I had fly just flying around this completed bunk in um, the barn, and I figured I would just make a short video and answer a few of these questions that way and um, uh, first off we're going to explain why them frack tanks are here and we're going to explain um, our feed storage the the bunks and whatnot and I ended up buying a uh, frack tank too from uh, Hainsworth I don't know if you've remembered when me and Jared and Andrew went to Hainsworth Farms back in I believe it was April and um, looked at a silage body and he had a um, dry hill frack tank there. Well, I ended up buying one from him a couple weeks ago and it was just delivered here um, Thursday. So we're going to do a whole video on that frack tank anyways, but we're, we'll just, I'm just going to take the drone in this video, fly over some areas, explain a few things and um, use the joint drone to give a better perspective on um answering these questions and um i'll just explain a few things quickly this introduction is getting a little long so we're going to roll right into it here i'm just going to fly the drone um explain things as we go and that'll kind of answer um everybody's question all right we'll get along here okay the first question um that i got asked was what are these tanks doing here. These tanks were brought in for an environmental cleanup after the um, tractor fire. Now we're going to run up and show you where the tractor caught on fire and just explain a few things very quickly here. Now the tractor caught on fire um, right here between this bunk and um, this barn here. It was actually right, right about here is where it caught on fire. Now once the fuel tanks ruptured on the tractor, the concern was um, the fuel that was running out of the tractor, which ran down this concrete pad here and ended up getting into our um, leachate containment system here, which we're going to fly over to. Um, all the water from the bunks runs over into this containment system, and then we have a tank underground in between where that white pipe is underground there to catch the um, leachate and then we can pump that into a, a manure truck with that stand pipe right there and then what we had done was we um, ended up pumping the um, runoff from the fuel spill into our manure trucks and um, an environmental cleanup company came in they provided the um, frack tanks right there to to offload the manure tankers into uh, What we wanted to do or what we didn't want to happen was we didn't want the um, Containment system to overflow which it was raining that day and we didn't want it to get into Well, there's a pond off to the retention pond off to the side of the bunk there and That's where your high flow um, bunk runoff goes into we collect all the water from the the barn roofs the water that runs off the barns and whatnot that runs one way and then the water that um, runs off these bunks runs into that containment system there and we're going to fly over to the other side of the um, bunks in between the bunk and the barn here okay right now we are um, parked over between the bunk what we call bunk one and the cow barn you can see them kill zones there in the lawn that's from the bunk juice leaking um, the juice is leaking out of the bunk now we're able to contain that that's running back into a catch basin that's on the other side of this now well, there's an old tether sitting there there's a catch basin there and then that all that is pitched and it's running underground and through a pipe 
underground around and in front of all these bunks and then it flows down into our um, containment area there now what we are required to do is to catch all of the runoff from our bunks the silage is harvested at 50 to 70 percent moisture and any of the runoff from the haylages or the silages you have to contain that because it's high in nutrients and you don't want it to um, end up in um, a waterway so what we end up doing is collecting it and then we mix it into our manure and we spread it um, spread it on the fields um, when it's mixed into the manure it um, it's diluted out enough and then on the other side of this retention pond there's a vegetated treatment area for the water to run off when we get you know a heavy rainstorm or something so the second question I would gotten was why do we um, why do we feed our bunks out this way and now the reason for that is we end up coming down through this one side of the bunk here and we open the bunk we only take half of it and we go all the way down through this side here which we got a bunch of tires in here from the halage bunk that will end up going back onto the halage bunk so these will be picked up and moved out of here we go to the back of the bunk then we run along the back side of the bunk until we get turned around and then we start heading back forwards this way if this bunk if we don't end up only getting halfway down through this one side we can start filling this bunk and then we're left with the silage left from the year before out front and then what we're able to have is fermented feed um, to feed the cows so this bunk here is almost empty we'll fly over and uh, look at the um, you know, we got part of a bunk cover that we took off of this halage bunk here so we're gonna fly over to here quick this is the conventional silage that's left which we have a little more of it left and then we've got some refusal feed that we've dumped along the side that we've got to get cleaned up here so what we'll end up doing is defacing all the moldy crap off the side of that bunk before we fill and then we're only it looks real nasty but um, you want to leave that there until you get to the point of feed out because it's kind of has it um, sealed up if you will so we've got some cleanup to do in this bunk so there's the uh, conventional silage there and uh, you know we're feeding this one um, back through as well so that ought to answer a couple of those questions. All right, somebody wanted to see the halage bunk here. So this halage, this bunk here on the right-hand side, uh, we ended up putting second cutting in. And we ended up putting third cutting on top, and we're just about full here now. The contractors that put the bunk in, they just pulled in. So that bunk is full. These walls are 17 feet high, and we're 8 feet um, eight or nine feet or to wall we're at 20 27 or eight feet here so that one's full and then we're gonna end up going into uh, bunk two today which is up here right in behind that mixer wagon we're gonna go into that bunk with the rest of the third cutting Okay, as long as we're on the topic of uh, frack tanks, back in um, April, and did kind of did a video on it. Um, went and looked at a moss silage trailer at Hainsworth Farms, and um, all I really went there for was to look at the silage trailer. Now, um, Chuck, he builds um, manure tankers as well, and he's now a dealer for um, Dry Hill, and we ended up buying this frack tank from him. And uh, we had this delivered here, uh, it was like Thursday. This this frack tank, unlike the other ones that are here, 
Um, this frack tank is for um, manure. I'm going to be doing a full uh, video on this. We'll just kind of run it around, run around it a little bit here. We can transport this tank to the field with um, either a um, truck with a heavy duty hitch on it or um, I'm going to hook a three point hitch to a tractor um, to, to get it to the field and then what we'll do is we'll dump the manure um, tanker trucks into it and then um, use this frack tank to load the um, spreader tankers in the field. This has got a swing boom on it which is swung over the top of the tank and uh, down you know just kind of parked in it there it's got a set of legs on it that you'll set up and um, set up to be able to load um, spreader tankers in the field with now the advantages to something like this is it takes the the non synchronization if you will out of the troubles of trucks showing up at the same time and having a gap in um, trucks, uh, you know, as they're trucking manure, if they get a problem back at the lagoon or something like that, you usually end up with trucks on top of each other and the timing gets all screwed up. Now, the pump that's on this um, frack tank gets run with a um, tractor, and then we can also hook up a um, right that valve on the bottom right hand side which is the left hand side in the video here um, you can hook up a hose to to go to a drag line system um, this is fully remote control so the guys that are running the spreader tankers in the field they can run everything with a with a remote control right from the right from the spreader tractor so we're about at a battery here so um, yeah we're just well, up over the top and now this has got um, full agitation um, on it too this this tank had been demoed um, a couple different times and um, that's why it's got some stains on the inside but it's got some piping in there to enable um, enable you to be able to agitate um, the tank which we're, we bed with sand, so we're going to want to agitate this quite frequently. And then the whole tank is um, tapered, of course, from the back to um, the front to enable you to be able to um, agitate that tank out. You can see the pipe that's got kind of, it's not really a Y on the end of it there. But that's kind of used to uh, agitate it with, kind of get you a better look at that. There's the piping in the bottom for agitation, and then there's a couple of uh, float type gauges. You can kind of see them kind of dipping down into there a little bit. And then we've got the uh, sump up in front of the tank. We've got kind of a cutout for the uh, uh, pipe that's hooked to the actual pump itself so that it doesn't cavitate at all. All right, so that's going to do it for the um, frack tank, which we'll do a whole video on it all by itself here. What there is is a hitch that goes on the three-point of the tractor. And then you uh, hook it up to this pinnel hook here. Now, we can also pull this with... Um, the C5's got a heavy pinnel hook on it, and then uh, that Volvo... Um, truck that we use for that tag along trailer uh, we can use that as well so we get you a better look at that so all right that does it for the frack tank